Frag attacks are a brand new collection of vulnerabilities that affect all Wi-Fi enabled devices. Announced just a couple of days ago, some of these vulnerabilities have been hidden in Wi-Fi for over 24 years, since the very first version of Wi-Fi itself, WEP. Frag attacks affect every version of Wi-Fi. WEP, WPA, WPA2, and even the brand new WPA3 is susceptible to these hacks. The researcher who discovered these new vulnerabilities, one Matty Vanhoof, is a veteran Wi-Fi hacker. He's the guy who uncovered the crack and dragon blood Wi-Fi hacks. He reported frag attacks to the Wi-Fi Alliance nine months ago. Since then, they've been frantically working on fixes before making knowledge of the vulnerabilities public. All Wi-Fi enabled devices are susceptible to at least one of the frag attacks. But how many devices remain unpatched? Have any people been hacked using these vulnerabilities? And how do they even work? That's coming up in this video where we break down and dissect cybersecurity related tech news. These new findings consist of two types of vulnerabilities, design flaws and implementation flaws. The design flaws are vulnerabilities in the Wi-Fi standard itself, so these bugs will affect pretty much all devices. Design flaws aren't quite that concerning. Whilst yes, they can be used to exfiltrate data and inject malicious code, they are rather difficult to implement and require user interaction. The implementation flaws, however, are a little more spicy. Implementation flaws are caused by widespread programming mistakes introduced by the manufacturers of Wi-Fi devices. These vulnerabilities are much easier to exploit than the design flaws and are therefore of most concern. So how do they work? The first design flaw works on the basis that Wi-Fi often combines multiple small packets of data into larger packets. The larger packet contains a flag that lets the receiving computer know if it actually contains multiple packets. Matty discovered that this flag isn't authenticated, which means it can be modified, allowing a victim to be tricked into processing the encrypted transported data in an unintended manner. In English, this means that malevolent packets can be injected into a network by an attacker, which could force a victim into using a malicious DNS server, for example, or worse. This works even when a victim network is password protected. The other design flaw works on the opposite principle, that Wi-Fi sometimes splits larger packets into several smaller ones. By exploiting vulnerabilities in how data sent utilizing this feature is decrypted, an adversary can exfiltrate data from a victim, again, even when a network is password protected. As I mentioned, these design flaws are quite tricky to implement. However, the implementation flaws are a whole lot worse. Worse. Our Wi-Fi hacking veteran discovered that certain Wi-Fi devices accept any unencrypted frame, even when connected to a protected Wi-Fi network. This is a major flaw and is the headline vulnerability in the frag attack arsenal. Matty demonstrates this vulnerability. Using his tools, all he has to do is to specify a network to attack, as well as the MAC address of the victim. By injecting unauthorized packets, he manages to turn off an IoT light bulb, which is connected to a password protected network. Obviously, hackers turning off your lights probably isn't very high up on your list of worries, but it's just an example. This flaw could be abused to inject anything. If the victim, in this case the light bulb, relies only on Wi-Fi for its security, then it's screwed. If it uses HTTPS or some other security protocol, then it's still potentially safe from this hack. There are various other implementation vulnerabilities which have been discovered. A common theme among them is Wi-Fi clients or networks not checking to see if data is authenticated or processing data in such a way that allows a bad actor to inject malicious code. Each of these vulnerabilities has been assigned a corresponding CVE identifier. Matty has tested all of these vulnerabilities on over 75 different devices. Every single one of them was vulnerable to at least one of these frag attacks. Most major device manufacturers will already have released patches for the bugs, but many devices still haven't received fixes, and some probably never will. I'm looking at you, Mr. IoT. For this reason, Matty hasn't released any of the tools he's developed to exploit these flaws, but he has pledged to release them once a large enough fraction of devices has been patched, for educational purposes, of course. His research paper is already public, which explains these flaws in magnificent detail. If you happen to be a Wi-Fi hacking genius, you could always go develop your own tools. I wouldn't recommend it, it's probably extremely complicated. However, Matty has released a set of tools which helps test clients and access points to see if they're vulnerable to these vulnerabilities. There is a live USB version of these tools which comes with all the drivers and everything you need pre-installed. Probably best use that if you're interested, as whilst there is a great level of documentation here, the installation process looks a little involved. Are there any ways to defend against these hacks if your device is vulnerable? Yes. Make sure you're using HTTPS as it acts as an additional layer of protection. You can also configure your DNS server such that it can't be poisoned. There are also some lower level settings you can change. However, the good news is that there's no evidence of these hacks being used in the wild. The hacks also require an attacker to be within range of the devices they want to exploit. So you and I are probably safe, if only because we're not important enough for someone to go out of their way to hack. Speaking of things that are important enough for you to go out of your way to check out. 
We all have some server running something somewhere, whether that's in the form of a website or a dinky Minecraft server. Here's why you might want to switch them for free to today's sponsor, Linode. Linode is a totally customizable cloud hosting platform that grows with you, from hosting small personal projects to enterprise scale neural networks. If it runs on Linux, it'll run on Linode. Linode launched way back in 2003. That's three years before AWS was even a thing. Linode doesn't spend a second on side hustles like grocery chains or reading you bedtime stories cloud computing is what they do best and is their only focus. Linode is offering all of you guys $100 in free credit just for signing up. Claiming your $100 is the easiest decision you're going to make today. Use it to spin up a Minecraft server, set up a pen testing lab, instantiate your own VPN. The possibilities are endless. They have 24-7 phone support, which is a godsend in the world of servers, so you will never be left out in the cold. Go to linode.com slash satonic or click the link in the description to claim your free $100. If you like this video, make sure to help me out by tapping the like button for the YouTube AI. As always, stay tuned for more hacking videos and have a good one.